Do that matter? Yes, it does. In a Cincinnati courtroom, the narrative of Terrell Webster unfolds, weaving a grim tale of family legacy and personal downfall. Terrell, the brother of notorious tri-state murderer, Lonnie Webster, faced his reckoning before Judge Jody Lubers. His brother, known on the street as a bona fide hustler, had previously been sentenced to a staggering 80 years in prison back in 2007, embedding a narrative of crime within the Webster family. Tyrell's conviction stems from an argument turned fatal in April 2012 at a home on Osage Avenue. Grover Cleveland Watson and Webster had an argument that escalated into Watson's untimely demise. Judge Jody Lubers, presiding over the case, observed Webster's demeanor, which veered towards dismissiveness and indifference. His lack of cooperation and respect during the sentencing hearing only solidified the court's resolve. The jury, after a two-week trial, found Webster guilty of murder, deliberating for merely an hour before reaching their verdict. This swift decision underscored the gravity of Webster's actions and the evidence arrayed against him. The courtroom atmosphere was charged with tension and sorrow as Watson's sister, Carolyn O'Brien, addressed the court. But when I heard the story on the news, the first thing I did after I could close my mouth was just to ask God to forgive you because she didn't know what she would do. Legally blind, she sought to direct her words towards Webster, seeking a semblance of justice through her forgiveness and condemnation. Judge Lubers facilitated this poignant moment, highlighting Webster's unsettling reaction, laughter in the face of his sentencing. Just so you know he's laughing right now. I really don't care about this, because you know what, you laugh at that. But the moment they get you behind those prison walls for the rest of your life, you will be somebody's girlfriend, and that smile will no longer be on your face, it will be tears. O'Brien's words, filled with both forgiveness and a stark portrayal of Webster's impending reality behind bars, left an indelible mark on the proceedings. Webster was ultimately sentenced to 18 years to life in prison, a verdict that perhaps closes a chapter on this tragic tale but opens another on the consequences of a life led astray. The case unfolded in Tampa, Florida, with Lewis Matthews at the center, convicted of sexually battering his girlfriend's 10-year-old daughter. In April of 2019, Matthews, while living with his girlfriend and her daughter, committed the crime. The situation escalated and the victim's mother caught Matthews in the act with her daughter. In a panicked attempt to destroy evidence, Matthews took the victim to a convenience store without her mother's consent, where he purchased bleach and poured it on the victim, aiming to eliminate any DNA evidence. However, this attempt to obstruct justice was futile, and Matthews was later convicted. During the sentencing hearing, it was revealed that Matthews' own mother chose not to attend, signaling the profound personal and familial ramifications of his actions. And we're asking for lunch, one, two, and three. Despite the defense attorney's narrative, the court focused on the severity of Matthews' crime. Prosecutors emphasized the irreversible trauma inflicted upon the child and her family, advocating for a stringent penalty. Judge Kimberly Fernandez, considering the gravity of Matthew's offenses, sentenced him to life in prison, underscoring the judiciary's stance on child sex crimes. Remarkably, Matthew's reaction to his sentence was one of nonchalance. He shook his attorney's hand and chuckled as he exited the courtroom, a demeanor that starkly contrasted the gravity of his crimes and the lifetime of trauma he inflicted on his young victim. Matthews, now serves a life sentence at the Hillsborough County Jail. In a tragic event that unfolded outside a foods company supermarket, an elderly woman lost her life during a robbery, leading to a significant police investigation in Bakersfield, California. The suspects, Maximilian Lee McDonald, Lawrence Gregory Slaughter, and Christopher Harvell Patterson, were tracked down by police, with a key piece of evidence being Lawrence Slaughter's ankle monitor. The incident occurred when 71-year-old Guadalupe Ramos was attacked and robbed of her gold necklace as she left the foods company market on Haley Street on August 19. The assault led to Ramos falling to the ground and subsequently dying from cardiac arrest, which was induced by an irregular heartbeat caused by blunt force trauma. Slaughter, 28, on parole at the time, 
had his movements on the night of the robbery precisely documented by the monitor. This data, alongside surveillance footage, placed all three suspects at various locations before and after the crime, significantly aiding the investigation. The suspects appeared in court, shackled and facing charges of robbery and murder, pleading not guilty. They openly laugh in the back as the court proceedings take place, feeling no remorse for their actions. The victim's daughter, Angelica Ramos, expressed her profound grief and outrage over the senseless loss of her mother. That, means, that disgusts me. That, that person should get death penalty, matter of fact. And I'm going to do whatever I can to make that happen. You see, he's going to be laughing once he's San Quentin. All three men were sentenced to life in prison, however, due to a change in state laws in 2017, they had their sentences reduced to 20 years. Next, Las Vegas, Nevada, becomes the focal point of a deeply unsettling case that has captured the attention of both local residents and the wider public. Jesus Ayala, 18, and Jammer Keys, 16, stand accused of a crime that has left the community and the nation reeling. Their alleged involvement in the hit-and-run incident that claimed the life of Andreas Probst, a retired California police chief. The demeanor of Ayala and Keys in court, characterized by laughter and disrespect towards the victim's family, only adds a layer of disdain to their already notorious profile. Andreas Probst, a figure of law, order, and community service, met an untimely and violent end while cycling in Las Vegas on August 14. His career in law enforcement, marked by dedication to public safety and justice, stands in stark contrast to the actions of his accused killers. The courtroom behavior of Ayala and Keys, including mocking gestures and laughter, has ignited outrage and deepened the sorrow of the Probst family. Taylor and Crystal Probst, wife and daughter of the deceased, have been vocal in their dismay and disbelief at the accused apparent lack of remorse. How can you sit there after taking a man's life and act like such an entitled they it's really have no remorse that this is just a game to them. The court proceedings for Ayala and Keys are set for September 16, 2024, nearly a year after the tragic incident. As the trial date approaches, the community, the media, and all those touched by the tragedy await the outcome with bated breath. I will never get to see my baby brother graduate high school, go to college, graduate college, get married, have children. I will never be an aunt and my children will never know their uncle. On February 27, 2012, the quiet community of Chardon, Ohio, was shattered by an unthinkable act of violence. Chardon High School, typically a place of learning and friendship, became the scene of a devastating shooting that would leave three students dead and others injured. TJ Lane, an 18-year-old student, was at the heart of this tragedy. On that fateful day, Lane, waiting for a bus to an alternative school, opened fire on unsuspecting students, claiming the lives of Daniel Parmiter, 16, Demetrius Hewlin, 16, and Russell King Jr., 17. The attack also left three other students wounded, one of whom, Nick Walczak, was paralyzed after being shot multiple times. The reasons behind Lane's actions remain murky. His arrival at the sentencing hearing in a shirt emblazoned with the word, killer, and his crude, defiant outburst in court only added to the enigma of his motives. His lack of remorse and apparent disdain for the gravity of his actions were chilling. Lane was handed three life sentences without the possibility of parole, a small measure of justice for the irreparable harm he had caused. The courtroom was charged with emotion as family members of the victims confronted the reality of their loss facing the perpetrator who showed no sign of regret. I will be glad knowing his existence every day, every minute, every breath is controlled by rules, and that he is away from society, locked up in a cage, like the animal he is. Lane's behavior in court, including smirking and laughing at the grieving families, underscored the monstrous nature of his actions. Lane now serves out the rest of his life at Warren Correctional Institution. Thanks for watching. We hope that you found this information both informative and engaging. If you haven't already, 
Be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you never miss a new video.